Hi everyone, so I just posted a video on how I did this reaction backwards, but in this video I'm going to show how to do the exact same reaction but going in the forwards direction. I feel like it'll make it seem all very full circle. So first I'm going to make my starting molecule a little bit prettier because this is probably not how you would see it in a quiz or exam setting. So I'm going to put my carbonyl on the left side and my amine group on the right side. So here's my carbonyl and I'm going to number my carbons as I go. So this is my five where the carbonyl is. This is six, four, three, two, one. So I'm going to put two, one, and then this is my NH2 off of my one carbon. So I'm going to literally just duplicate this and put it over here. So if that was kind of tricky for you, I just recommend doing it really slow one more time, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So since I know I'm going in the forward direction and I have an H plus cat, that means that this reaction is happening in an acidic solution. So that means that water is always going to be present. And this carbon is already electrophilic, but it will be an even better electrophile after this oxygen grabs onto our hydrogen in our solution. It could be from the acid itself, or it could be from water. And then my carbonyl carbon's oxygen is going to have a hydrogen and be positively charged. So I'm gonna draw the rest of the molecule. One, two, three, NH2. So this reaction is different from the other primary amine reaction that I posted because our nucleophile, the nitrogen, is in the same molecule as our electrophile, this carbon. And the reason why it's different is because this will be an intramolecular reaction versus an intermolecular reaction. An intermolecular reaction has two components that come together, and an intramolecular reaction just has the same molecule reacting with itself, and that's what's going to happen here. So you'll remember that in the previous videos, I had started with my carbonyl, we formed our hemi, we formed our hot electrophile, and then we formed our final product. In this case, it's going to be an imine because I'm starting with a primary amine. So now that we have our carbonyl and this carbon is ready to do some science, we know that we're trying to get to our hemiaminol first. So our nucleophile, nitrogen, is going to attack our carbonyl carbon and cause this double bond to break, giving a lone pair back to the oxygen. But since this is a or an intramolecular reaction, at this step, I really recommend numbering your carbons. So I'm going to number my carbons. I number them pretty much the same way every time, but um, my number is going to be a little bit different than from the backwards reaction video that I posted because I'm pretending that this is my first time seeing the problem. So I'm going to make my nitrogen 1, and my 1 is going to attack my 2. My 2 is going to be my carbonyl carbon. And then I know that since my ring is forming pretty much in this direction, this is going to be my, quote, ring. That means that I'm going to have to keep numbering to the right, not to the left. So I have my, it's attacking my two carbon. My two is connected to three, to four, to five, to six. And that's how I know that this is going to be a six-membered ring. So I'm going to go over the numbering again later, but that's how it is for right now. So this next part is a little bit tricky because I have to make sure that my ring is accurate. So I am going to put my N in my ring. I normally draw my N at the very bottom or whatever is attacking. I'm just going to put it at the very bottom because it helps my brain. If you want to put your nitrogen in a different place, then I recommend doing that. But I'm pretending that I haven't seen the original problem, so this is the best way for me to do it in my brain. So this is what I recommend. And I know that my nitrogen is 1, so that means that my 1 attacked my 2 carbon, which is connected to 3, 4, 5, 6 make sure all my substituents are in the right place. My two carbon here is connected to a CH3 group, so that means I have to put my CH3 group. And I don't have any other substituents on my three, four, five, six carbon, so those are good. But since my two carbon here originally had the carbonyl, and now it's going to be just an OH bond, that means that my OH bond is going to come off of carbon number two. So I have my OH here. But my nitrogen was also bonded in the original part, to two hydrogens. So I have to make sure I draw my two hydrogens. So I have hydrogen one, hydrogen two. And my nitrogen is positively charged because my nitrogen has four bonds and no lone pairs. Five minus four is one. So in order to make my nitrogen happy, I have to deprotonate it. So I'm going to have something in our solution, probably water. Take away one of these hydrogens. 
giving back a lone pair to the nitrogen and then my nitrogen is going to be happy. So I have a happy nitrogen with just one hydrogen. My CH3 group stays the same and my OH group stays the same. And now this is my hemi-aminal step. We've already pretty much halfway there. So I with my carbonyl, I knew I had to make my hemi and now I know that I have to make my hot electrophile. So how do I do that? Well, I know that I'm trying to form an imine, and an imine is characterized by a CN double bond. And I know that my carbon that's going to be double bonded to the nitrogen was originally my carbonyl carbon. So since my two carbon here was my carbonyl carbon, and here was, was my carbonyl carbon, that means that my double bond is going to form here eventually, eventually, but we're not quite there yet. We have to give a reason for the double bond to form. We have to give a reason for this OH group to leave because I know that I want my double bond to form here. I'm not going to break this bond. I'm not going to break this bond. So that means I have to give a reason for this to leave and how we can do that. We're going to protonate the oxygen. It's going to grab a hydrogen from probably water. And once it's protonated, then I'll have a reason for it to leave. So I have my nitrogen bond to the hydrogen my carbon, and now my oxygen has two hydrogens and it's positively charged. So now my oxygen has a reason to leave. So now my nitrogen's lone pair is going to fold over and form this double bond, which is going to kick off this whole group, this whole water group. So now I'm going to form or draw my new product, NH with my CH3 group. I have water in my solution, which it already was present. And now I have a double bond between what used to be my carbonyl carbon, here, here. But now my nitrogen is positively charged, and now I just formed my hot electrophile. So in order to make my nitrogen happy, I know that I have to deprotonate it. So the, maybe the water that we just formed, or a different water molecule, is going to come in, take this hydrogen away, and then I'm going to have my final imine product, and it's going to be happy. So... This is what I just formed. And I'm gonna go back and do this reaction over again, but I'm gonna point out the numbering one more time and then um, compare this to the backwards reaction that I did in the previous video. So in the very beginning, this is what I had from the backwards reaction that I did in the last video, and I just made it a little bit prettier because you're more than likely to see something like this, or I guess this chunk on your exam, than to see this on your exam, because then it would be too obvious that you're trying to form a ring. So I renumbered it to make it look pretty, and that's why these numbers are different from these numbers because I'm pretending that I've seen it for the first time. So I made my nitrogen my one because I want my one to attack my two, three, four, five, six. And that's how I know I'm making a six membered ring. So I drew my six membered ring and then I added my substituents after because I feel like that really helps my brain. One thing at a time. I knew that my OH would be off my two carbon because that's what it showed here. So I have my OH after the double bond broke. And then my CH3 stays the same, so that's just kind of sticking off right here. I didn't number this one because it wasn't a part of the ring. You can if you want to, but I feel like uh, less numbers are better if it still makes your work right. My nitrogen was positively charged, so we deprotonated it. And then I formed my hemiamino. So after I formed my hemiamino, I knew that I was trying to form my hot electrophile, which means that I was trying to get rid of my OH group. And to get rid of it, we protonated it, and it made this oxygen really unhappy. So then my nitrogen folded over, formed a double bond, kicking off all of this, you know, this one water molecule. So this is my hot electrophile because this carbon is super electrophilic due to the dipole moment between this carbon and this positively charged nitrogen. So to make my nitrogen happy, this water molecule took a hydrogen away from the nitrogen, hydrogen away from the nitrogen, and then I formed my final imine product. So I'm going to go back, zoom out a little bit, might be a little disorienting, and look at the backwards reaction that we just did. So the reason why I feel like the backwards reaction for this particular molecule is scary is because we are forming a ring. And the tricky part about this reaction is breaking the ring. And we knew that we had to break the ring because in a primary amine reaction, when it's inter, the nitrogen molecule is my nucleophile, and my carbonyl carbon is my electrophile, but if they're in the same molecule at the, at the final product, that means that I'm trying to make them separate. I'm trying to form something like this. 
So I feel like it's really helpful to do a reaction backwards and then do it forwards if it's if the backwards reaction is giving you the most trouble because we can always do it forwards. Forwards is a little bit easier. We learn mechanism forwards, but we don't really learn them backwards. So I feel like that's why this is particularly tricky. So I hope this video helped. And if it's still kind of funky, I recommend doing it slow and trying again until it makes more sense. So I hope this helped and I'll make another video soon.